Hello everyone. Today we are looking at a new game, Phoenix Point. I have been following this game for a while now and I am excited to finally play it. The game comes out today actually. I got to play it a little bit before release so thank you devs for sending the game before release. And now I have put in a couple of hours in game and the game is fun so far. For those who haven't followed the game, this is a spiritual successor to the XCOM game. It's actually made by the designer of the original XCOM games that were released in 90s I think. So most of you probably did not play that one, but like me, if you are a fan of the new XCOM games by Firaxis, which was released, um, I don't know, four years ago, um, and you have been waiting for some XCOM action since XCOM 2 released, this game is for you. The game feels very much like an XCOM game and uh, initially I was going to make a video talking about some basics of the game and how the game differs from Firaxis XCOM games um, that we are more used to, but the game devs have done an excellent job of making some tutorial videos themselves. I'll put a link to those videos in description. If you're new to these kind of tactical strategy games, you should definitely check them out. Those tutorial videos are actually really good and I really wish uh, more studios did that. So instead of talking about the basics and the game and stuff, we're just going to play the game for a bit and see how it feels. So I've been playing a little bit. I have explored only a tiny part of the thing and I recently just destroyed a Pandora nest, which was very sweaty. But anyways, this is the Geoscape, which is the world map. And if you have played XCOM, you'll be very familiar with what's going on here. These are all the different sites. We have uh, we have five soldiers right now and I've managed to keep them alive somehow. I don't know how, but they're still alive and kicking. And uh, the premise of the game is the world has this mist problem, basically a virus uh, infected and there are creatures coming out of it and things like that. Um, so the mist is spreading and we need to stop the mist from going all the way 100%. That is game over. And that's the gist of it. The game also have bases. This is our base. And if you go to bases, we only have discovered one base right now. I'm sure there'll be more. And they have different buildings that do different things and stuff. We can also build vehicles, by the way. The game also has vehicles, which is nice. It also has planes that we can use to explore things that uh, all our five soldiers are in right now. We can have more than one plane, which is interesting, which will increase our um, exploration. And uh, there's also research where you can pack up, we can find new texts, you can learn more about different kinds of enemies and about... Uh, this is I think the main storyline how it progresses. So that's also similar to how XCOM games were. The game also has three factions. This is one of the factions, Disciples of Anu. This is the other faction and there's a third faction that I haven't met somehow. We haven't met the third faction yet. But there are three factions, they don't like each other very much. Based on what you do and some choices you make, they'll either like you more or dislike you more. Like you see, this is our sign. So they are friendly towards us, but they don't like Cendrions. And Cendrions are friendly towards us, but they don't like um, Disciples of Anu that much. So that is, I think, very interesting. It adds a lot of uh, replayability layer to it, because depending on which faction you choose to get allied to, you might get new things, you might get different endings and stuff like that. All right. Let's jump into the game and see what we can find here. So we take our ships and our five soldiers. Zarico continues to expand its military capabilities, this time with a new class of soldier. The technician, robotic arms, cranial input hubs. It all sounds very impressive, and we are not exactly opposed to this development. But we do wonder, when is New Zarico going to invest in anything other than war? Yes. We need to achieve some kind of peace. Okay, so basically the Synedrion's uh, head is not uh, happy with Jericho, so their relations have decreased a little bit. That's fine. Okay, we'll go there. We'll explore our justice exploration site. Our operatives land near a cluster of burned out vehicles. There has been a fight here recently by any guests, perhaps in the last week or so. On the ground, there are corpses that were tied up and left. These people were survivors, but on the losing side. They were left to die of starvation lying in the dirt. Search the wreckage. Uh, search everything, but take time to bury the dead. Let's see. So we get 15 tech, we get 250 medals. So just lost 10 stamina, but we got some uh, diplomacy bonus from New Jericho and Zenedrions. You seem to be genuinely on our side. And everyone here at Zenedrions 
really appreciate it. Okay, so we are just improving relations with Sinatrion. That's what's happening here. So she's asking for more help. Basically, so we gotta choose one of these and uh, it will take the story that way. We'll just choose this. It's fine. Zara will be pleased to hear that. She is one of the most we have a new site. We have a new diplomatic mission. But it's hardly that simple. All right. We don't see any other sites here. We're going to run a scan. And uh, we'll advance and see what we find. All right. Someone's under attack somewhere. That guy is under attack uh, from Pandora. So let's go and help out there. These are some missions that we see. Red level is low. Uh, it's nighttime, which is interesting. And uh, if we win, these two factions will be very happy and uh, one faction won't be very happy. So attacking strength is 4 Pandorans and defending strength 11 of the Anu. Uh, we need to just protect the citizens there who are somewhere and we'll get these rewards. So let's do it. Why the heck not? These are our guys. They are already. These guys have less stamina. This should be topped up, but I think it will be okay. So we have five people basically. This is our... our uh, Heavy assault guy with a big cannon. This guy is our uh, sniper. And these three are assault rifles with a little bit of... Uh, they did get some upgrade trainings and stuff. They have some special abilities. They just have assault rifles. They don't have anything fancy. And we are just running our the guns that we started with and the armor we started with. So nothing fancy has happened yet. I also like the art style quite a bit. It's, uh, it's very clean, very neat looking. I really like it. And also like this, like look at this, that nice animation, right? All right, and here we are in the middle of uh, like a urban environment. So, okay, we see one, see one critter here. And, um... It's a small site, yeah. I think we'll, we'll be able to clear it pretty quickly. Who can see that thing? So these are five guys, right? We click on it. Okay, this guy can see him. We can click on it and we can info and we can see what it has. He has a shield and he has a pincer. So he's a melee guy. His carapace is already disabled. What the hell? I think this is a bug. Really shouldn't be disabled. The maps also have these supply drops where you can go and pick up things and uh, recover your uh, willpower. Willpower is needed to perform certain actions. Also, when it goes zero, the soldier will panic and he will miss a turn. Uh, let's see if we fire that guy right now. Now, if you fire him, you can either just fire him like that, shoot him, or you can zoom in and then you can choose where to fire. Um, so right now, we can only see his head his, and his shield. That's all we can see. And the inner blue circle is where your bullets might go. If you look at the top, it says damage 20 times 6. So 6 shots will be fired from this assault rifle. Each will hit for 20 damage. If they all hit the head. And the total amount of damage it will do is in, on the top, he has 150 health and 15 armor. So he won't die anyways. The other good thing is, in this game, the environment is destructible. And this might be a flammable thing. So we can just shoot that and see what happens, actually. Yeah, let's do it. Let's just shoot it. Let's see what happens. Let's shoot this thing. Nice. All right. So now we can see him better. And uh, I think there's another... Yeah, there's something here as well. So we might be close to it. Now we can hit him better. So we can hit his arm. That has no armor. It's 50 hit points and no armors. We can hit his pincer. We can hit his... Uh, what else we got? Other arm, torso, head, and shield. Um, and uh, depending on which part you hit, it might get disabled. And when it gets disabled, you cannot use it. If we hit his arm and get disabled, he cannot use that arm. And similar thing can happen to your soldiers as well. If your soldiers' uh, arms get disabled, he can't fire a gun. So let's try to hit this arm. It's pretty big. I think we'll be able to hit it. Um, head would be nice, but it's too small. Our blue circle is too big. Let's try to hit this thing. Uh, we could kill him if it hits right. There's a chance. So let's see. All right. So now we know there's second one here. 
we hit that one apparently not that one now this soldier is out of action points right he cannot run he cannot move he cannot do anything I'm ready. um you cannot see any of them you can see one you cannot see any of them and you cannot see any of them all right so if you place him here you see the blue lines that means that he can go there and he can shoot those people all right first of all this is our sniper who has a sniper rifle uh let's take him there and let's see oh he cannot see it from there oh crap all right well that's unfortunate i thought he would be able to see it from there hmm both these are melee guys i think this guy has um carapace disabled arm disabled so he, yeah he cannot really hit like he's pretty disabled all around so what we'll do is we'll put him on overwatch in case someone comes from there he'll just shoot at okay so you guy can shoot him anyways let's see he can shoot his head just barely um i might as well take the chance he did some damage not all six bullets hit but now we see more of it and let's see we can hit the torso that's a pretty big chunk might be able to kill him here nope not all bullets hit again um you can hit him let's go there and oh he can see three okay so there's that there's that where's the third one oh it's there mm, interesting okay well that changes things so you can go there and you can shoot him actually so you should definitely shoot this guy so let's try to finish him off right there will be one less enemy come on oh so close but he's bleeding. I think he'll die. Minus 30 bleeding. I think he might just die when his turn comes. Let's put you there. He's our tank. He has 200 health and 32 um, armor. So he can take some damage. And if we hit him, he's not very accurate. He has a cannon. If we hit anywhere on this thing, on this uh, inner blue circle, that guy is dead. So hopefully he doesn't miss. He missed. Oh, come on. That's terrible. All right. So what we'll do with him is uh, use his ability called War Cry. The enemies within ten tiles, and that decreases their action point by one. So we'll do that because we can. All right. Yeah, we'll just say standby, space, space, and now we have run out of all action points. Do you want to end your turn? Yes, we can. So that guy's dead, like we said. There's the fourth one. Now we know everyone where it is. You'll try to hit him. That's fine. He has a lot of points. He'll be fine. Oh, he didn't even hit him. He just deploys his shield. Okay. That's the other one. Wow. Okay, we have more. Yield shoot. Okay, that missed. Good. Alright. Alright, so he has shield on. Let's see what he does. He'll, he'll also deploy his shield, right? Okay. All right. So now we got a lot of things here. You first of all need to move away from there. I don't think we'll be able to kill all of them. So first up, who can you see? You can see that guy and you can hit him really well. Cannot see his head, unfortunately. You can see his arm that will hit you do the most damage. So let's do that. Let's just hit him. Yeah. All right. His arm is disabled and he's bleeding. Good. Um, you now need to run away from there. A little bit. Stay behind because those are our melee guys. And uh, we don't want to really get in uh, range of that. So we'll just move behind. You, sir. Let's see if we chuck a grenade there. What happens? We have some grenades. That will kill one of them. Okay, so you need to move a little back, obviously. Uh, he won't have any cover, but that's fine, I think. Alright. So you chuck a grenade right there. It'll destroy the environment a little bit, and it'll hurt those two people. See what happens. Alright, that guy's dead. That guy's really injured. His arm is injured. He's bleeding and all that crap. Um, now, if you shoot him, you'll definitely kill him. 
What about that guy? I would like to kill him, actually. But again, he might not hit it. Um, He'll definitely hit this guy. This guy's a surety. Uh, what about you? Can you shoot and kill him? He can hit his head. So let's, let's first kill him. Add one more time. This time kill him, please. Nice. All right. Excellent. All right. So we, we can do this. You. Hit that guy. Okay. Hit him again. In the head. Okay. He's bleeding. He has lost will points. He's disabled his head. A lot of damage. Good. So... There is also friendly fire in this game, by the way. You can hit your friendly units really bad. So here, if he misses, there's a chance that he might hit our guy here, which is not great. Um, so this will kill him. Let's see if it actually kills him. No. Okay. Well, I thought it might kill him. Okay. We'll just finish off this guy then. We'll just finish off this guy. Done. Okay, so we are all out of action points, but they lost a lot of will points. Anytime you lose uh, your, like your soldier, you lose will points. So they lost like three people there. He doesn't have a lot of will points. But he is not panicking, so he'll still do the next run. Let's see what he does. And they have healed and part enabled and stuff like that because, you know, alien stuff. He'll shoot again. And hit for 40 damage. Okay. But now he's dead. And dead. Boom. Well, that's it. That was a really quick mission. Super fast. So one of us injured. We got a level up. And uh, we killed all enemies. All civilians are alive. It just, I don't know where the civilians were. I didn't even see them, honestly. But yeah, there it is. This is obviously one of the easiest missions. I recently went into the the mist thingy. And that was really hard to do. We recovered a lot of things. We recovered some, some weapons, some armor. And we also got the reward. And people are happy with us. That's good. And then we used a grenade so we can replenish it. And manufacturing these things take a tech and material. So tech and material, replenish all. And good. So there we are. We just helped out uh, Anu. Mist is spreading fast, by the way. We need to, like, kill these Pandora nests to make sure they stop. Um, and if you see, our personnel have low stamina. One of them has low health. So we need to send them back to uh, back to base to recover. So we'll select this and we'll set it back there. And if you let the time pass, you will see these bars fill up. And there you go. And we have the research complete. Great. And that guy's good and done. Uh, we can create some vehicles, equipment. I think we need some magazines and stuff. There's also uh, limited ammo in, in this game. So if you see equipment, like there's ammo. If they run out of ammo, they are, you know, you, they are useless. They're potatoes. So we need to make sure they always have like extra ammo and stuff. Um, but yeah, that is the gist of the game. Basically... Uh, you just keep finding these missions, do the missions, make sure the mist doesn't spread too far. And then there are side missions with diplomacy with each of the three factions. So there's a mission there. There's a mission there that we can do to get famous from them. And then I think they will also give us like tech or stuff or they'll share their, their map or something like that. Yeah, and we can get new more um, soldiers by recruiting from like we can say go there. It says you can recruit from here. So we can go there and we can get um even four. Yeah, so we can recruit soldier for this cost. 41 tech, 470 material, and 200 food. So it, I think they cost different things depending. I haven't played a lot of this game either yet. So I'm I'm actually really looking forward to uh playing the whole campaign and see where it takes us. I think it'll be fun. It feels very XCOM-y and it's meant to feel that way. If you have played XCOM, if you liked XCOM, this is definitely a way to go. I will 
definitely will be playing the whole campaign. I don't know if I'll do it offline. I might actually stream it sometime, but we'll see. I'll keep you guys updated. Let me know what you think about the game. If you like it, if you don't like it, if it seems interesting enough to buy it. I think the, if I'm not mistaken, the price is, I think, $40 for base game, which is, I think, fair, considering that uh, it feels a pretty complete game to me. I had one crash in the tutorial just once and when I first started the game. But after that, I haven't had any problems. I don't know if there will be a release version or if this is a pre-release version. But either way, the game works pretty well. The graphics are fantastic. I'm running it on, um, let's see, 4K first of all. I'm also running it on Ultra. So everything looks great to me and it runs pretty smooth. Um, yeah, but for 40 bucks, it's definitely worth it for me. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think of the game and if you are thinking about buying it. And we will probably see more gameplay of this game later. Till then, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.